I'm joined by California Democratic Congressman Ted Lieu. The congressman is one of the lawmakers who drafted the article of impeachment against President Trump. Congressman Lieu, welcome. Thank you very much for being with us. You began drafting that article during the siege itself. Tell us why you think it's necessary to impeach President Trump for a second time when he only has about a week left in office. Uh, thank you, Elaine, for your question. Donald Trump incited a mob that violently attacked the Capitol to stop Congress from accepting the certified Electoral College results, and multiple people died. Uh, that is a high crime. It is a felony, and he needs to be removed as president immediately. So, as you know, in Texas on Tuesday, President Trump condemned the violence at the Capitol last week, but he did not take any responsibility. And he also said that a second impeachment would be, quote, dangerous for the country. What's your response to that, Congressman? So, today, Donald Trump had the ability to stop these armed marches that they're planning in the next few days, especially at the 50 state capitals. All he had to do was go on TV and say that the election was not stolen, that thousands of dead people did not vote, that it was false, that more people who voted than were registered, and that these voting machines did not magically switch votes. He didn't do that. In fact, he doubled down on the big lie. And that is what's fueling this rage among his supporters to then go engage in violence. Donald Trump remains a clear and present danger. And again, he needs to be removed immediately. So, in an op-ed you wrote for the L.A. Times, I want to read what you said, quote, For justice and to heal our nation, we need to hold those involved in the insurrection accountable. That includes the president. You know, given what we saw unfold, Congressman Liu, do you have concerns that impeaching the president could actually backfire, in that it would deepen that divide in our country and potentially lead to more violence? Uh, that's a reasonable question, but my view of what happened is that January 6 occurred precisely because we didn't push back on Donald Trump, because not enough people said, look, it's a big lie that you're telling your supporters that this election was stolen. And we let the president just keep on saying crazier and crazier things. And then January 6 occurred because his supporters believed that this election was stolen. So Donald Trump can tamp all this down, lower the temperature, if he simply tells the truth that Joe Biden won the election fairly and squarely. He refuses to do that. At the same time, you had this mob that was not only attacking our democracy, they were trying to assassinate Speaker Pelosi, trying to hang Vice President Pence. They were hunting for lawmakers. We can't just respond to this by issuing press releases. You know, I wonder, Congressman, how much support impeachment actually has among your Republican colleagues. What's your sense of that at this point? So we're very pleased that the number three Republican in the House leadership, Liz Cheney, has said she's going to vote for impeachment. Two additional Republican members, John Katko and uh, Mr. Kinzinger, said he's going to uh, said they're going to vote for it. And then Mitch McConnell today is reported to have said that he welcomes this impeachment. So we're starting to get bipartisan support, including in leadership in both the Senate and the House. What's your sense, though, Congressman? Because it's one thing for, uh, for the lawmakers on Capitol Hill to feel a certain way. It's another for those supporters of President Trump far outside of Washington, all across this country, who may be sympathetic and still believe earnestly and fervently what the president has told them, which is not true, but they may believe that the election was, in fact, stolen. And so that's why I've been calling on Republican leaders to denounce the big lie and to explain that the election was not stolen, that Joe Biden won in a landslide by over 7 million popular vote count, and that he won uh, numerous swing electoral college states. This was not a particularly close election. And Republicans are in the best place to try to tamp down uh, any future violence. At the same time, Congress has to do the right thing to send the message to future generations and to the world that when our democracy was attacked and people died, that we're going to respond swiftly and strongly. So, as Americans know, we are still under threat from this deadly pandemic. 
We know at least three of your Democratic colleagues, Congressman, have tested positive for coronavirus since the Capitol attack. They are blaming Republican lawmakers who they say were not wearing masks during the lockdown. Yes. Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman is one of the members who tested positive. And I want to read some of what she wrote. This is in The Washington Post. Quote, when I say that many Republicans are responsible for what happened to me, to others, and to the country last week, I mean their essential failure to accept facts that led us here. Much like they should be able to accept the results of an election, elected leaders should be able to accept facts like the efficacy of masks. What's your reaction to her statement and this concept of wearing or not wearing a mask, now a political statement in the United States of America? Uh, Bonnie Watson Coleman, my friend, is absolutely correct, and I hope she uh, gets well soon. It is a scientific fact that the coronavirus is spread through saliva and respiratory droplets. No one disputes that. So for the same reason that you don't have a right to spit on people, you don't have a right to spread your respiratory droplets anywhere you want. That's why you need to wear a mask. And the fact that Donald Trump somehow made this a political issue is one reason we have the worst pandemic response uh, in U.S. history and among uh, all the major countries in the world. And again, uh, we need to have Republican officials go out and explain that if you wear a mask, it will help stop the spread of the virus. Congressman Ted Lieu, Congressman, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Thank you.